So on this week's show, we gaze wistfully into Samsung's ring, which was proudly on display at MWC, and discuss whether it'll be worth slipping your finger inside when it goes on sale towards the arse end of 2024. And naturally, you can expect plenty more hilarious highbrow ring gags, because frankly, that's about the level I'm at this week because my head basically feels like there's a small child off its tits on Haribo and Smarties bouncing around the insides while jewel wielding croquet mallets. But don't worry, your uncle spurt has it covered. I'm basically going to flush the wee bugger out with f tons of whiskey. Tech Spurt Weekly! So far, I'd say situation has improved, about 20%. Anyway, Samsung first announced its Galaxy Ring out in San Jose at the Galaxy S24 launch. It was its, oh hang on, don't get out of your seats just yet, we've still got some more bollocks to bang on about, moment. It was absolutely delightful if you happen to have downed your body weight in coffee just before the launch and you were absolutely gagging for a piss, like myself. My eyeballs were basically swimming. But at the time, Samsung offered up very few details indeed. So what do we actually know so far? Well, first up, the Samsung Galaxy Ring will come in a range of regular sizes to fit fingers both fine and fleshy. Presumably, you'll have the opportunity to wander into a Samsung store or other shops what stock it and try on various sizes till you find one that fits, because there's nothing more irritating than a loose ring. So I've heard. As for the design, well, certainly the rings on display at MWC were suitably snazzy, but Samsung hasn't actually said what the final product will be constructed of, because these MWC prototypes were simple plastic efforts. What we do know is that Samsung's first batch will come in a trio of colours, silver, gold or black, and they'll sport a concave design to make the fit as comfortable as possible. The main feature of the Samsung Galaxy Ring will apparently be its sleep tracking abilities, which Sammy reckons will be a step beyond what you currently get with a smartwatch. Stuff that it can measure as you get a bit of beauty kip include how long it actually takes you to fall asleep after face planting your pillow. In my case, after a skin fall, that's normally a negative figure, so I normally pass out halfway up the stairs. And the Galaxy Ring can also keep tabs on your rest and heart rate, which indicates just how deep your sleep is and also your respiratory rate, which can help to reveal any underlying health problems. I'm not so sure about that. I personally, I prefer the British approach of blissful ignorance. If I happen to notice that my pee is bright red, for instance, I just chalk it up to a few too many Bloody Marys, and in the future, I just try not to look, which isn't a great tactic if you like dry shoes. And the Galaxy Ring can even monitor how much you thrash about in your sleep. And for a lot of people, certainly myself included, I think wearing a ring to bed will be a lot more comfortable than rocking a smartwatch, especially a big old chongster like this. And if you do happen to flail about a lot in your sleep, accidentally clocking yourself or your bed partner with a tiny ring instead of a massive smartwatch is probably going to hurt a lot less. Plus, if you've gone and bought yourself a Google Pixel watch or an Apple watch, the thing will probably be dead before you even climb under the duvet anyway as the Samsung Galaxy Ring hopefully will enjoy days and days of battery life on a single charge as there's no screen to power or anything like that, it's just a bunch of sensors. All of the data collected will apparently be analysed using AI type shenanigans, which then spats out a vitality score. So as if we weren't already heavily judged enough in our daily existence, now you can be graded on how good you are at being unconscious. And Samsung can then dish up advice on getting better quality kip and help to diagnose when something's not quite right. And I certainly can't wait to be told off for going to bed at 2am absolutely off my face and full of far too much vindaloo. Now, frankly, my other ring already gives me plenty of jip about that every morning. And Samsung has also revealed that the Galaxy Ring could slip nicely into your smart home setup. So for example, as a purely hypothetical situation, if your Galaxy Ring detects that your skin temperature is rather high, during the night, it could signal a fan that's connected to your smart home setup to turn on and help cool you down a bit. And apparently the Galaxy Ring will also work in tandem with one of Samsung's Galaxy watches to produce more accurate readouts, as well as measuring other stats such as your step count and your SPO2 levels. And with any luck, we'll all be able to finger Samsung's Ring later in 2024 when it goes on sale, they reckon towards the back half of the year. Pricing and plenty of other details, of course, yet to be revealed, but you can bet your uncle's spurt will be giving it a go when it's available. In the meantime, definitely please let us know what you think down in the comments below. And now it's time for the part of the show that certainly has my ring vibrating violently. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. Oh! Oh! Ah! 
All right, so let's start this week with Theodore Techers. You're right, Theo, who says, my bodily reaction after watching Techspert is to have diarrhea. I mean, I certainly like to think of this channel as the botulism of YouTube. May cause negative reactions to anyone averse to poor quality tech analysis or bold northern deviants. Mythic Sun says, one thing I'm trying to do out of pure curiosity is find the exact American equivalent of Techspert. I did find a blog who reviews Polaroid stuff who came close, but he was just a little bit too chipper, optimistic and sober. But more importantly, he didn't own a cat. I mean, I have been compared to a lot of other YouTubers uh, in my time on this channel, but frankly, it's basically just anyone else who happens to be white, bald, likes a drink and often says stuff like F it, which I mean, you know, frankly, th there's a lot of us on here. Now we've got an update from Saturn Blue as well on whether liking your own comment here on YouTube actually makes you go blind. And apparently confirmed, he says, blind now, but I'm going to continue liking myself. Well, I mean, obviously, if you're stuck in the household day, there's not a whole lot of other stuff to do. Just beware of the old hairy palms. Mouth Stick Gaiman says, Pissed off honey badgers are known to attack one's dangly bits given the opportunity. Oof. Although this does give me a rather glorious idea, which basically just involves rounding up a whole bunch of those fuzzy bastards, bugging them in a massive old crate and then sending it off to James Corden. Or perhaps maybe just like launching them through his bathroom window using some sort of homemade catapult. Now last week's show was a wee bit different because instead of looking ahead to future tech, I instead got my hands on the OnePlus 12 old Genshin Impact Edition. This wee bugger here, in fact, and of course we had lots of lovely digital chat in the comments. So Nia6472 says, Ki Shing, Bro killed it, butchered every pronunciation, love it. Yeah, perhaps unsurprisingly, I apparently didn't say the character's name right at all. I just hope that I said near 6472 right, otherwise I was just kind of rubbing salt into the wounds a bit. Jonathan Saw says, I nearly unsubscribed when you pronounced the name. And Neil J says, Qixing in Chinese is pronounced Keqing, which is exactly what they say as they collect all our money. I mean, as you'll know, if you regularly watch this channel, I can't even say English words right, let alone Chinese names. So frankly, I've got more chance of winning a gold medal in a massive quiff competition than ever getting this name right. Uh, GI Playmaker says, kindly want to ask, how much did the gift box weigh before opening? Well, there's no weight listed on it and I don't have any skills, but going off just the feel of it, I'd say roughly three pints of bitter, give or take a handful of pork scratchings. Uh, Barris Sue says, I wish that they had different alarm and notification sounds since these ones are just ripped straight out of the game voice lines. Yeah, considering just how much effort they put into the actual design and the rest of this smartphone, including all of the stuff that they chucked in the box, it did get a little bit shonky when it came to the audio side of things. We live in an era of change as the old order that has existed for a thousand years is about to be rewritten. Join me. Let us bear witness to this historical moment together. Yeah, for the ringtone, I was really expecting like a rousing bit of Genshin Impact music or something, or I could have at least got the voice actress to record a new line for the ringtone, something like, I don't know, hey, answer the phone. I mean, not that, obviously, you know, something like that, but not that. I mean, maybe for one, don't say I guess. Um, but what's the Genshin Impact equivalent of a All of these fantasy things, games, movies, whatever, they've always got made up swear words that the characters call each other. So, you know, you've got big burly barbarians calling their mate a smarf or a gobber or something. So certainly let us know in the comments below, what is the Genshin equivalent of a It'd be great to know. All these smart asses who know exactly how to pronounce all of the character names. And also, I haven't actually dared to take this phone out in public, but I would absolutely love to do a video where I walk around the big market in Newcastle on a Friday night and see how long it is before somebody slaps my head backwards. But instead of me, of course, I'd probably just hire some hapless 16-year-old minion like all the other YouTubers, pay him very little money and get him to do it. Uh, next up, this Aditya says, take a shot whenever Uncle Spurt says ka-ching or ka-ching? What the f*** was it again? Kirching, but something like that anyway. But yeah, basically, yeah, that's an excellent drinking game. Just take a shot every time I say that freaking name in last week's video. Make it a double shot every time I say it wrong, which is every time. Anima19879 says, the OnePlus 12R is currently the best priced phone. 
Yeah, I do quite like it. It's, you know, it's missing a few little bits like wireless charging, for instance, but overall, you know, a respectable effort certainly gets the Uncle Spurt spooge of approval. I'd have to say if you're looking for like true value, I'd probably go for like a Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus or something like that if you can put up with the crapware and everything. Next up, Tim Chris, quite an apt name there, says a few years ago, Kerching, Kerching used to be so many players favourite character. So this is such a nice set. Too bad the only thing I could probably afford is that hoodie if it is ever for sale. Yeah, I've got to say, not really my colour, that's for sure. But I had that thing thrust into my arms at the OnePlus booze up over at MWC. They had a literal pile of them that were they were trying to shift. And in the weird neon glow of the bar lights, it looked kind of white. So it actually looked all right. It wasn't until I actually gazed upon it the following morning in actual daylight that I realised, oh dear God. It's basically the colour of vomit after overindulging the night before on aubergine. Michael W says, any Kerching fans who get this phone will certainly feel they get their money's worth far more than, say, Porsche fans who bought an Honor Magic. Yeah, the fact that it's only an extra, what, 40, 50 quid or something over the original OnePlus 12R, despite the fact you get all those extra bits bundled in the box and, of course, all the extra stuff on the actual phone itself is fantastic value for money. It really went the extra mile up until the audio bits, the ringtones and stuff, obviously. You know, I'm guessing they basically just realised at that point, oh, sh pub shuts in 20 minutes and just scrape together whatever audio files they could get their hands on. And Michael continues, and thank you for the guided tour of your recent and past bowel blowouts. This is the kind of quality content that keeps us coming back for more. I see it more as kind of quite violently weeding out anyone who's looking for actual, you know, tech content and happens to stumble upon this channel by accident. Rick Guzman says, I hope the Corpo Wheels appreciate your restrained professionalism as much as your viewers do. Hugs and kisses from NYC. Hugs and kisses right back, buddy. Yeah, I think some PRs really do struggle when it comes to me and my videos. Um, you know, I speak to some of them out of work and everything, and occasionally they're like, really love that review you just did of, uh, of our phone. But unfortunately, I struggled to explain some of the things you said to our Chinese client. I spent 10 minutes discussing with them exactly what a cockwomble is. I mean, frankly, that's kind of half the reason I do it, to be perfectly honest. I, I would actually pay good money to just log into those Zoom calls anonymously and just, just watch in the background. Uh, running low on time now, so better make these the last couple of comments. I so, saw uh, a user and then a whole bunch of letters and numbers and junk says, What phone do you use in your personal life? All of them. And Stephen McKay says, Hey, Uncle Spurt, I've ordered the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Did you get a chance to get your hands on it? And if so, what's your thoughts? Uh, yes, Xiaomi did have it at the pre-brief that I went to at MWC when I was out there. And to be perfectly honest, I had a wee stroke and that was about it. The first impressions are certainly it is a full on chunkster. Like if I ever manage to squeeze the Xiaomi 14 Ultra into my jeans, it will probably have to be surgically removed. And if I actually did a squat thrust with it in my pocket, well, I'd probably end up scattered into various bits all over the place like one of those blokes in Starship Troopers. But yeah, proper serious full-on hardware though. And if you want a pro-grade camera experience, it looks like you can't do much better than this thing, especially if you get the camera kit, which looks rather nifty. I see the Americans have already got their samples, so hopefully one will be arriving at Techspert Towers soon. Stay tuned. So that's it for another week's show. Massive thank you again to everyone who commented last week and mostly pointed out how shit I am at seeing Chinese names. Please do tap 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 your comments, thoughts, whatever you fancy uh, down in the comments thing, obviously. I'll try and smash your way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the f is next week? So next week is Zenfone Baby. It launches March the 14th, which is Thursday? Thursday, yes, Thursday. And in addition to all that shenanigans, I'm going to review this bright yellow bugger right here, the Xiaomi Watch S3. Got plenty of other tasty tech heading your way. And then join me again, please, this time next week for yet more Techspert Weekly shenanigans. Have yourself a bloody marvellous weekend. I'll see you next week. Love you. Oh, so we've got some whiskey left. Yay.